Hi friends, welcome to Rouse Rising. My name is Katie and we are knee deep in the Three Rivers Challenge. That's a pantry challenge where we stay out of the grocery store and we live on our food stores and we have to get creative because I'm gonna show you my fridge. It's empty, it's nearly empty. It's not completely empty, but it's close. There's no produce in the fridge. So that means we are using frozen produce. That means we're using freeze dried produce. That means we haven't been to the grocery store in over three weeks. We're going on four weeks now. So we're getting really creative. And in this video, you're going to see lots of breakfasts made from scratch. I am sharing with you my granola recipe. Uh, we're also going to be making some waffles from scratch, as well as all the meals that we've been eating from our pantry. So I'm going to share all that with you today. Everything that we ate this week. I hope you get some inspiration. I hope you're inspired to stay out of the grocery store and save your family some money. Do it for as long as you can. It's a wonderful way that I've been able to challenge myself this year. I think last year I continued stocking up food throughout the Three Rivers Challenge. But this year I've worked really hard to stay out of the grocery store and save my family money because our finances are so tight right now. This is a temporary thing and this pantry challenge is the perfect time. If you want to know more about why I stock food and what's going on in our personal life, why this pantry challenge is so suiting to our lifestyle right now, you can check out my last video and I'll link that down below in the playlist for the pantry challenge in this video's description. All the links for the products that I use throughout this video will also be down in this video's description along with discount codes. I hope you check everything out, especially the Redmond's Real Salt. And then I also like to use my caraway pans when I'm cooking this one, especially because it's huge and I can cook for my family of seven in this one pan. So check out all those links down below and let's get into this week's pantry challenge meals. Okay, we've got this beef stew meat and I'm gonna coat it in a bit of gluten-free flour and saute it in my pan. We're gonna do a bit of lard. First thing I'm gonna do is add some lard in there. I've got it on the saute right now. And then we're gonna put some gluten-free flour on this meat and seasonings. Throw all this on here and then we'll toss it in all of this. Redmond's Real Salt. Do a bit of Italian seasoning. A little bit of garlic. It's starting to smell good already. We're just gonna get this meat brown. Get a nice color on it, so then it adds lots of flavor to this meal. So we're gonna use the rest of this right now in this beef stew. I'm gonna do maybe half a cup of water and I'm gonna look in my freezer and see what I have. I had this package of whole tomatoes from November, 2023. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and add those to this beef stew and I'm gonna make it kind of a tomato beef stewy do. Throw those in there. Stewed beef and tomatoes. And we're going to turn this off and do slow cook. And we're just gonna slow cook this Oh, probably all day, but we're gonna start it out on four hours. And then after four hours, we'll add some potatoes and some other stuff to it, potatoes and carrots, and then we'll let it cook for an hour and then we'll have dinner. Not sure what happened, but you guys know how to chop up potatoes and carrots. This is the finished beef stew. All I did was added potatoes and carrots and some salt, seasoned it up to taste nice and the kids gobbled this meal up. It was really, really yummy and we even had leftovers for the next day and I'll show you what I do with the leftovers later on in this video. This is the last bacon from the pigs we raised. These slices of bacon are huge. I'm bigger than my hand. These are from Cooney Cooney Red Wattle Cross pigs. Mm, smells so good. We'll also fry up some eggs next. Some of the kids wanted more eggs, so we're cooking up some extra eggs for seconds. Once again, I forgot to show you guys the finished. Look at this bacon, it's amazing. So this is the bacon. The kids had some fried eggs and bacon, and that was breakfast today. 
All right, today for lunch, we're having leftover beef stew that we had for dinner last night. We've got some peas in it. We added peas, added a little bit more water just to thin it out a little bit so it could cook. But then we added peas, and so the kids are gonna have this for lunch today. It's got lots of beef still left in it. All right, we are having a smoothie. It's got mangoes, strawberries, blueberries, yogurt, some milk, frozen bananas. It's got all the good stuff in it, so. We're gonna get this blended up. peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with this and then Hagen is over here peeling cucumber pickles to go along with it and then I also made a large thing of I had frozen pineapple juice in my freezer so I made a large thing of diluted like I add more water than it calls for an extra can for my kids and then they're gonna have that and then we're gonna make peanut butter sunflower butter whatever sandwiches over here with this simple simple lunch so i'm gonna pour up this juice right now for the kids juice with this lunch not mine this one did oh look i forgot to take off all my outer clothes inside it's cold and i'm barely warm with merino wool vest thick flannel tank top hat two pairs of pants two pairs of pants so we're having chicken tenders for dinner and uh i'll show you the package but chicken nuggets and salad and pizza in a pinch these things are amazing and we had one bag of these in our freezer so this is what we're gonna have tonight it's just gonna make our night easier actually we should be putting them in tortillas or something because that's actually a really good idea they're delicious had some street tacos buried in the or tortillas buried in the freezer so i grabbed out some and we're gonna make little tacos with these i have some leftover salad so we're just gonna top them with salad and chicken nuggets surprise surprise came out of the bathroom and aaron made breakfast for the kiddos Next up, I am going to be milling some soft white wheat berries to make banana bread. Now, making banana breads and other fruit 
spreads like that, you want to use your soft white wheat berries because of the type of crumb that you are going for. If you were to use a hard red or hard white wheat berry, that would produce maybe a little bit too much gluten, producing a tougher bread or a chewier bread. But what we're looking for with banana bread is a cake-like texture. So that's why we're using the soft white wheat berries. Also in my freezer, I've got lots of bananas because there are times in our life when our kids don't eat bananas and there you see the very last of the fresh rotten bananas anyways, the ones that nobody ever wanted to eat for whatever reason. So now we're mashing up all the freezer bananas and all the old bananas that were on the kitchen counter. And we're gonna use this to make a wonderful loaf of banana bread and you need two cups of banana. All right, this morning we're gonna make some banana bread and I have to make my brown sugar. So I just use cane sugar and this is three quarters of a cup and then I do about a teaspoon of blackstrap molasses. You can use any molasses, but this molasses is really good. It has a lot of iron in it. And then we're just gonna mix this up and we're gonna add all of our wet ingredients to this bowl. We've got two cups of bananas in here. This is three quarters of a cup brown sugar. We've got a quarter teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking soda, and about a teaspoon of cinnamon. Back here we've got two cups of fresh milled soft white wheat berries for our banana bread. We've got a third, like three quarters of a cup of yogurt, probably a little bit too much. We're going to add in a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to add our yogurt. We need two eggs to go in here also. Two eggs. Add the sugar in with our wet ingredients. We're gonna add all of our dry ingredients over here and get it sifted. And then we'll combine the two. We're gonna add some chocolate chunks and we're gonna add some walnuts if I can find them. Ouch. Oh yeah, don't forget your oil. This is a quarter cup, probably closer to a half a cup coconut oil. And I just warmed it up so that it was melted. And when you do that, be careful because it'll splatter everywhere. Like that just did. I also have a sourdough banana bread recipe on my channel. Um, I need to get back into the sourdough. I've got my starter in the fridge. I'm just going to add these together. I need to get out my bread pan for this. And I put parchment paper in my bread pan, so we're going to do that. Put our chocolate chunks in there and our walnuts. Bake this at 350 for 60 minutes and then we're going to make lunch while we wait on that to bake. We got broccoli steaming. We've got over here, we're going to do a quick and easy lunch from the pantry, classic Alfredo sauce, some egg noodles, and some chicken. And we're going to combine all of that and have the kids an easy lunch. We also made this banana bread for dessert. It looks amazing, but we're going to try to save that for after the kids have their lunch. Good chicken. I just seasoned it with real salt and um, pressure cooked it. It's just chicken breast I got on sale and was able to can it up and now we can use it. One thing we can do to stretch this Alfredo sauce is I'm gonna pour this juice and I'm gonna add some cornstarch to it and then we're gonna mix this in too because that one jar, I'm just, I wanna stretch it so we're gonna mix in the cornstarch 
and make more of like a chicken gravy sauce with this. So we've chopped up this broccoli, nice and small. And turn on the stove and get all of this heated up. This slurry of cornstarch and chicken juice. And get that going. And we're gonna add this, ooh, cheese and get that going. And we'll add the noodles once this right, is This is what the sauce looks like. I'm going to add some ground pepper to it and then I'm not just going to let this heat through and then we'll add the noodles. Just added the noodles. All right, that's the banana bread. I cut it. It's a little bit too warm to be cut, but the kids were ready for it now. So we'll save this next half for tomorrow. I was blessed by my neighbor. She gave me buy one, get one free of her fresh free range eggs. So of course I took advantage of that and I was able to freeze dry eight dozen for my family. Then we ate four dozen and then I did another four dozen, I think, or maybe it was six dozen I freeze dried for her. So now I am putting all this away. I'm gonna put this in my glass jars and vacuum seal it with my food saver vacuum sealer with my ball jar attachments to vacuum seal my jars. And then these are gonna store for long-term in those jars. And when I run out of eggs again, then we've got our backup powdered eggs, which make great scrambled eggs. You can't even tell a difference. And they're really, really good for baked goods. on. Yeah, some more protein powder. Yes. This is their chocolate flavor and we really like this. We add it to our smoothies and it's really tasty. I also use it in baked goods and when I make energy ball bites. So we'll make some of those and I'll also make some granola and I might sprinkle this on the granola too. So stay tuned. Got some recipes coming up to make with this vegan organic protein shake mix. Aaron's making burgers. That's Redmond's real salt, olive oil, right? Or is that olive oil? Uh, yeah, and then garlic powder. Garlic powder. We're at a onion powder, but we had some seasoned salt, some olive oil. And he's gonna cook them out on the smoker. Burgers with pickles. Good morning. We're still in the pantry challenge, and we made some banana bread with some frozen bananas that we had in the freezer. We have more frozen bananas, so we've got plenty of banana bread for the future pantry challenge if we want to do that, or banana pancakes or banana waffles. Um, 
and I was thinking about that this morning. I was, but I'm just, I don't want to make waffles today. So I'm frying up a bunch of eggs. We sliced up this banana bread for the kids. And then right here, we've got the hot chocolate that we home make. And that's going to be breakfast for the kids this morning. I love this huge saute pan from Caraway because I can make, I can make even more eggs than this, but this is all that my kids need right now. So we're going to get these served up. Look how perfect they are. I just put the lid on and let them sizzle and they don't stick. And I can serve them out to my kids. One of these days I'll get a large cast iron pan that's this big, but they're really heavy and my, I have a really bad shoulder from an old injury. And so I can't lift heavy things with my good arm. And um, this pan works perfectly for my large family. I do use these, but these are starting to get, this is an eight inch and what a uh, five inch, I'm not sure. Um, this eight inch is starting to be too small for cooking for all my kids at once. Riker? Yes, mother. Okay. Do you want marshmallows in it? I'll put one in. How many do I got? I'll get a couple. You want to put those in yours? Huh. Two. Two. One, two, three. With bread this easy, get a bread machine, make your homemade bread. It's four tablespoons of oil. We got one and two thirds cup water, four tablespoons of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, a quarter cup of rolled oats, two teaspoons active dry yeast, two cups all purpose flour, two cups of fresh milled hard red wheat or hard white wheat. Then I put it in the bread machine for medium loaf, takes two hours. Ooh, I'm excited about this. Um, for the kids, we've got some peach jam here. It's got some jam chunkies in it and they're having peanut butter and jam on this fresh loaf of bread. And for this bread, I did half heart or I did a quarter hard red wheat, a quarter hard white wheat, and then the rest of it was half all purpose flour. So two cups of all purpose flour and then like a cup of hard red wheat, a cup of hard white wheat, and it makes just a perfect crumb, perfect sandwich when I do that. So that's how we prefer it. I mean, I also make it, oops, without all-purpose flour in it, obviously, but the kids much prefer it like this, and I don't blame them. It's a softer, nicer crumb to it, whereas the other one can be more densely packed. This one is a little bit more airy and light, which is kind of more like the um, grocery store. Actually, it's better than grocery store bread because it has strange ingredients in it. And this only has, what, five, six ingredients, something like that. I don't know. It's minimal. All right, so I'm going to get to making these. We're going to add the peach jam. The other kids had plum jam, and we ran out, and the two littles were in the bath. So now the two littles are going to have peach jam. Oh, you're nice and cozy. Mm -hmm. Yum. Look at this peach jam. Chunks of peaches. This is going to be so good. And then we might have some fruit cocktail too. I'll see if the kids are still hungry. The big kids are having two sandwiches. We don't eat a whole lot of tinned food. When I grew up, growing up as a kid, that was what my mom kept in our house was she canned food and we had a whole lot of tinned food. So Riker here is learning how to use the can opener. We just got this can opener a couple months ago, but, um, the kids are going to have some fruit cocktail along with their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Now they've almost eaten a whole two pound loaf of bread. Keep going. Yeah, keep going all the way. Yep, it should. Now you should be able to lift it up, pop that off. Whoop, careful. <gasps> well, okay. Yes, fruit cocktail. We're all out of fresh fruit. So it's canned fruit now for this pantry challenge. All right, it's another night of baked potatoes so i just load my instant pot up with potatoes i have the rack in it and about a cup of water then we just put the lid on seal it up we hit manual and then about 25 minutes should be perfect and then we'll have baked potatoes in about 30 minutes I'm gonna make my family's favorite granola recipe i'm just missing one ingredient i cannot find my desiccated coconut it's in one of the deep freezers i just haven't located it i went out there and looked in one but Aaron's out there doing some work in the garage. So I looked for it the other day too. I can't find it, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna melt, uh, this is about one and a quarter cups of 
uh, coconut oil. We're gonna get this going. And then I'm gonna make some brown sugar with molasses and organic cane sugar. And we're gonna put that and one cup of honey and these walnuts in with this coconut oil. And that's gonna help kind of candy the, the walnuts um, with the sugar and the honey and it makes them really yummy inside of this granola recipe. Then in this big thing, normally I double this recipe, but tonight I'm just gonna make a single recipe. We've got five cups of granola. We've got two cups of walnuts. We've got half a cup of hemp seeds, three tablespoons of chia seeds, a quarter cup of almond meal, and then we're gonna do some Redmond's Real Salt. We're gonna do a teaspoon of Redmond's Real Salt. Do not forget this, I always forget it. So I'm gonna try not to forget that this time. All right, and then we're also gonna do one teaspoon of vanilla extract, a half a teaspoon of almond extract, half a cup of brown sugar that we're gonna make. And then of course the one and a quarter cups of coconut oil and one cups of honey. All right, over here, we're just gonna make our half a cup of brown sugar. And this is what we're gonna kind of candy our walnuts in. I love molasses. Brown sugar. And then here's the recipe if y'all wanna look at my chicken scratch. If you want to screenshot that, I'm altering it just slightly based on the fact that I don't have certain things. But this is my general baked granola recipe. Sometimes it takes a little longer than an hour in the oven. But you just mix everything together and put it in the oven on a tray. And it keeps good for a long time, at least a month. Okay, next up we are gonna put the walnuts along with the sugar in this pot. And a little bit of that oil that's left over in the pot. Okay, I'm gonna add the oil in here. And we're gonna add some honey. Leave out the honey if you just want granola, but this is gonna turn it into a granola bar. And that's about a half a cup of honey. It's just some brown sugar, some honey, and some. Go in with your whole hemp seeds, some protein, a little bit of your almond flour, just to give it a little bit of nutty flavor. We're gonna go in with some chia seeds. And then before we even add, go in with our teaspoon of salt. Very important to always salt. And then we're going to add some vanilla. And a tiny bit of almond extract. Okay, this is going to go into a preheated oven after we get it all mixed up, 200 degrees. It smells amazing. I just press it down onto the tray. You can lay it out thinner. You could divide this up between two large trays, but what is this? Is this like a 12 by 15 or so baking sheet? It's a big baking sheet, not a huge one but big enough. So we're just gonna pop this into an oven. I pressed it down, hoping to get some granola chunks. There we go. Almost 200, so we're gonna set the timer for 60 and check it then and uh, see how it is. I just found my desiccated coconut. Oh my goodness. So I just popped this in here. I'm gonna take it out and add some. Okay, so here we go, because I think toasted coconut is just so, so, so good on this. So we're gonna add some. And I can't believe I thought it was in the deep freezer. I must have took it out because this was the last little bit. So this is about, this is gonna be half a cup. Yeah, half a cup. Desiccated coconut complied with. So glad I found that. I wanted to tell y'all that's how I found the desiccated coconut was I was going to show you. I reuse these large gallon containers. What you do is you put hot water in them after you clean them and you put hot water on the inside, not on the outside. Keep this dry. Keep this part, this label dry. Put hot water on the inside. Let the hot water 
warm the label or you can use the heat gun and then you're just able to peel it off super easily. Now I haven't done it with this one. This one's just oil soaked, but if I started to peel that farther, it would rip off. But if you save it, clean it, put hot water in it, I reuse them. I've got my coconut in here. I've stored this in the freezer before. And then I also, also use it for granola. So when this granola is done cooking, we store our granola in one of these. This one actually had flour in it, so that's not the one I'm gonna use. It needs to be cleaned out. But I do have a granola one that I use for granola. But this is my desiccated coconut one. And yeah, you can reuse these. These pizza rolls are super easy to make and you guys have seen me make them before. I buy these rolls, they're frozen from the frozen food section around the holidays when they have the best price on them. And then we use them for the next few months to make little pizza stuffed rolls. I just use mozzarella I get from Azure, then some pepperonis I buy in bulk from the restaurant supply store. And then I'm topping these with some garlic butter and then I'm gonna pop them in the oven, 350 I think for about 20 minutes and they turn out beautiful. The granola bar are also finished up and next all right these are the pizza rolls super duper hot but melty cheesy yummy goodness on the inside it's taken this pantry challenge for me to stop relying on my bagged teas. I have a bunch of bulk tea, and this is my favorite bulk tea to drink or combination. I like drinking skull cap with rose hips. Now, rose hips give me the necessary vitamin C that I need this time of year, and it adds a lovely flavor to my tea. So, what I do is about a full heaping tablespoon of skull cap and I drink this in the evening time to calm me down and wind me down for bed and then I do about a teaspoon of rose hips and the combination is really lovely I do a splash of honey and I refill my water three or four times with this one tea ball and that keeps me going for the evening time until bedtime when I sip on this in bed too and it's just really nice if you haven't dove into bulk teas I definitely recommend it because tea bags that you buy from the grocery store with tea already in them, the disposable kind, do have some toxic things. So we try to stay away from those because they are made with plastics and paper combined, and so it's best to avoid those. And it's just taken me a long time because I like the convenience of those. I've also been adding my marshmallows to my hot beverages this winter, and it's really nice. This gives me an added boost of gelatin in my diet and adds a bit of foam to the top of my hot beverages, which is really nice. This is gonna be lunch because we made these granola bars and the kids crumbled them up and ate granola for breakfast. It is 11.33, so this is like a brunch lunch. Made a whole bunch of potatoes with our Redmond's Real Salt. Y'all know we love that. And this is our easy meal. And the only thing we've bought um, the last three weeks are these eggs from my neighbor because she had a buy one, get one free deal. And I couldn't turn that down and she needed to offload her eggs. So take advantage of those types of deals when you can come across them. Yum. There you go, son. Kids want waffles tonight, so might be a little bit late to the game to get the sourdough waffles going, but we're going to go ahead and dump some discard that I set aside. It's probably a pretty hungry discard, but this is like some spare that I had. It's just been sitting in the fridge for like the last week, so it's time to use it. Bunch of fresh milled flour left over from our bread and what else did we make this week I can't remember we'll probably add some more more flour and more water to this in just a minute because we're gonna make like a triple batch of waffles and I'm just winging it so I'm gonna look up a sourdough waffle recipe and I'm going to follow that but right now I have to make leaven first so that's what we're doing we're sour sourdough starter flour water so we're just gonna add some more water. All right, we're gonna cover this and let this sit for the next few hours until we're ready to make waffles. We're gonna make some fried chicken livers and this Redmond's Real Salt is perfect for fried chicken or anything chicken fried that you wanna make. So I'm gonna mix it in with some all-purpose flour and we're gonna add some more garlic powder 
we're going to add a little bit more, maybe salt and pepper. I don't know what else we're going to add to this, but we've got our egg wash with our milk going. We've soaked our chicken livers in some apple cider vinegar water, and we're making the flour mixture now. We've got some coconut oil and bacon grease going in our skillet over here, and that's what we're going to fry our chicken livers in. So let's get this party going. I've doubled this recipe, but this is the waffle recipe from Lisa over at Farmhouse on Boone. You can find it on her website or on her YouTube channel. It's a really easy, simple waffle recipe and it tastes delicious and works really well every single time that I've ever used it. So here I've added some real salt, some vanilla. We've got four eggs in there. I'm gonna do about four tablespoons of honey. We also did about a tablespoon of baking soda in there, I believe, as well as about a teaspoon or three quarter, half a teaspoon of salt. And then I did about a teaspoon of cinnamon. There's that baking powder or baking, sorry, baking soda. <laughs> Well, check out her recipe, Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone, her sourdough waffle recipe. When you Google sourdough waffle recipe, it's one of the first ones that come up. It is a little bit tough to mix or challenging, but I like mixing it up by hand because I get a good workout. My arm muscles, my back muscles, my shoulder muscles. That's one good thing about working with sourdough is you will get a workout doing sourdough or baking with sourdough, cooking with sourdough, all that stuff because it's just one of those things. It's manual labor to get it done. Oops, I forgot my or uh, my oil, so I'm adding that now. I just melt some coconut oil in that little cast iron skillet. That's why you'll see it sitting on the stove with white stuff in it because that is the coconut oil that has firmed up at room temperature. And so that's the pan I always use to melt my oil. So I've got my waffle iron back there heating up and we are gonna make a bunch of waffles. So since this is a double batch, I will have extra waffles to feed my kids the following morning. So I always like to double things like this in my granola recipe and other breakfast recipes because it's so nice to have something pre-made already ready to go in the mornings. That just makes our mornings so much more smooth. I really enjoy having easy mornings when breakfast is already made or we make a quick and easy breakfast with eggs and toast as you all have seen. So we like to give our kids a protein packed breakfast. We really like to fill their bellies so they can focus on homeschool and get their homeschool knocked out before lunch. And homeschool usually takes less than two hours for our four kids that are in school right now. It's always nice to have extra and these waffles freeze up really well too. So if you make yourself a double or a triple batch, you can freeze them up and have them on the fly. So we just topped this with some butter and some peach preserves. There I am just trying to get a cover photo or something. You guys will see me do that sometimes in my videos. Usually I edit them out, but sometimes I'll leave this footage in here just for a good time, just so you can see some behind the scenes. Let me get the right shot. We gotta get the right shot of the waffle. Oh, look how beautiful. It's beautiful. All right, here's all the extras, and that's what we had for breakfast. And this mama is all tuckered out from a week of cooking from scratch. I am gonna wrap myself up in some warm clothes and get to bed. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for this meal prep video. I have been so busy today in the kitchen. I've made yogurt, I've done all kinds of stuff today, but I'm gonna share that with you in the next video. I'm gonna get this edited. It's Saturday night, time to get this video out 
to you all. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for another week of the pantry challenge. And I will see you in next week's video. I have been uploading videos on Saturdays or Sundays and Wednesdays. So stay tuned. I'm going to try to keep that up. Sundays and Wednesdays are my normal days. If I have a video ready on Saturday, I upload it on Saturday. But every Sunday and Wednesday, you can count on a video here from Rouse Rising. I will see you in the next one. Bye.